corn harvest has started in Iowa! Woo! That's some green corn. Hey guys, before we get started, be sure to hit that like button because it really helps support the channel and comment if you have any questions. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms. It is September 15th. I am finally back in the state, somewhere on the 15th. And it's been like a five weeks since I've been here. The corn has really dried down. Some guys have even started harvesting both corn and soybeans. I mean, it's that guy that was harvesting there was pretty green leaf. So I wonder if he was just doing high moisture for uh, cattle purposes, but I'm not sure. I know we're two plus weeks out from actually harvesting grain, but we have done all of our chopping. We're on custom work right now. And yeah, we're, uh, I'm excited. I haven't been up to the farm in over a month. I haven't been in Iowa for over a month. So this is my first full day back, second full day back. So let's get up there and let's see what's going on. But before we do that, guys, I've been wearing these nice Ariat shirts for the last month or so when I was up in Canada. These things are phenomenal. So I like these because they're nice dry fit. They're light, really perfect for summer weather, especially when you're working down south. They have the front pocket for my engineering uh, skill sets and my tools right there. And I've, I'm used to using Carhartt shirts. Those are nice, they're breathable, but they're not as light as these. These things are perfect for summer shirts. Easily would prefer these over the car brand and Ariat and I have actually partnered together so if you guys want if you guys are interested in any of these any of these Ariat shirts I also got some belts and work boots I'm trying out I'll give you guys a review on them a little later but you get a discount code down below if you're curious anyway let's get up to the farm alrighty guys I am back on the farm awesome but I saw some cool stuff on the way up so cut to that here's a uh, spray plane that's gonna dust me it looks like I have no idea what he's doing huh this is pretty cool Got a GEA, that's what I call them, G-E-A. Liquid manure injector. Two of them actually. There's another one down there. And then semis that have pumps on them that actually fill up. I'm guessing this is Blanchard's, a big dairy. I'm guessing they fill up here. Go and uh, fill up those manure tankers and they can get injected. It's an efficient way to do manure, that's for sure. Just going by the farm and you can tell we got some pretty green beans here still. I mean, this is our last planted field that we did. I think like May, late May, I forget. Yeah, this is like the greenest field I've seen for beans. Go. I'm guessing we had put fungicide on there if I was guessing, man. And then this stuff, this stuff is still pretty green too. So we must have put a heavy dose of fungicide on because we have some of the greenest crops in the county that I've seen on the way up here. Like, geez, I was not expecting that. Yeah, we're good, a good, probably three weeks out from harvesting that, at least. Pat's going to a custom shopping job because here's one of our wagons the farmer picked up. And here comes another one pulled by a deer. I'm guessing he's going over to Plogues. Oh, what are they doing here? Looks like Jackson County's finally getting the road fixed. Nice. This road up ahead is horrible. From here until Preston, it is bad. So hopefully they can get that done before harvest. That'll be awesome. So I, know, I did a lot more filming before I got to the farm than I thought I did. Sorry about that. That's getting ready to go. Okay, I am back. So, recap. Pit is full. That field is chopped. Pat is getting uh, sharpening his knives on a chopper. He's going to take that box that they just changed the tire on. He's going to head down south about 10 miles to a, uh, his first custom job. And then he's got another one after that today. And then he's got like two, three more weeks of custom work to do. And then we'll look at starting harvesting, but I'm not sure what everyone else is doing. I see they have the sieves out of the K7088 combine, probably working on stuff, some, some stuff. I see they got a feeder chain in there they're gonna change and a couple other things. So let's go see what's going on and uh, touch base and see what we got going today. And then if there's not much going on. I might winterize a sprayer day, even though it's 80 degrees, we get some pretty cold temperatures during the winter, minus 20, 30 degrees at times. So we like to winterize all of our sprayers instead of keeping them inside side. We'll keep them in the shed, but we won't have to keep them in a heated shop or anything. So I might do that today and then run up to Bellevue and I might move bales and see what else we got going on. So let's go. Working on the chopper. Then anything goes with the wagon that Pat's gonna take. And then we're just, like I said, just sharpening the knives for Pat. Cause you gotta sharpen them like every so often. We just got the chopper truck fixed. Headed here at a local shop in town. So we finally, it'll have power back and we won't start it with Easter, ether every single time. That'll be nice. Let's head back to the farm. I'm gonna do something I haven't, I haven't done in a while. Stop in and say hi to Grandpa Joe and my Uncle Jerry. We're buried in the cemetery right up here. The soybean field's getting closer. It's a lighter bean. I wanna say it's like a 2.6, something like that. We also planted this pretty early. And this stuff is pretty green still. 
I it was also a 2.6. That might be a 2.9. I can't remember. Yeah, this stuff is pretty green, but it, for the most part, the fields are pretty clean. Really can't complain about it a ton. And we did not put any fungicide on the soybeans this year. Oh well. That's going to have Bondo's head. So I'm going to go look at the sprayer. I'm going to try and spray, spray a load or two out and put some antifreeze through it just to try and really rinse that boom and get a full antifreeze so it won't freeze because water, as you guys know, is expands when it gets below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. And if it expands in, in the lines here, it'll actually crack some fittings and lines. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get this winter rested. That way it's done and off the list. This Patriot is quiet. Who knows? We might even uh, be trading sprayers this year. Who knows? We will see, though. Hmm. Wonder where my radio went. No clue. I thought that's Nathan. I got one. I just got some really good news. So the sprayer's filling up with water right now, and I'm gonna go check. Curtis and Bun are gonna go. They're working on the 7088, get changing chains, going through all the wear parts and everything like that. Nathan's gonna go help Pat chop, and Brian's out moving cattle stuff. Ooh. Okay, good and bad news for you guys. Bad news. So this tractor had transmission trouble a couple months ago. So we brought it up to Kuno's, they split it. Something must just must not have gone back together right. And we've had an oil leak ever since, unfortunately so. And it's not a light oil leak where you can just patch it. It's, it's a decent one. But good news is we got something on the farm that has been desperately needed for a long time. So come to this video for back in harvest, guys. You got you know you guys know now that we farm we farm quite a bit of ground 30 miles north, 30 miles south, and all we've had for a fuel tank was an L 100 gallon L tank to fill two combines, two tractors, and when we're doing tillage, fill all of that. So it was a pain in the butt, and sometimes we've had to make multiple trips back home just to get filled up. Well, we just bought something that has been desperately needed for a long time, and here it is. Ooh, that's pretty decent. So this is a Thunder Creek 990 fuel trailer, I believe, but it's branded Bex because we do a lot of a uh, we do a lot of seed through Bex, and they have a really good rewards program where you can get a really dirt cheap lease tractor, you can get a fuel tank, you can get a potential spray trailer, and you get a bunch of stuff all just by planting their seed. We personally have we've tested their seed. We don't see any benefits to their. Uh, to their seed in general. I mean, we, or any negatives to their seed over like Pioneer or anything like that. They're all pretty close right now. So we've been planting Bex for the last three years and we got a brand spanking new fuel trailer. Just look at this thing, holy crap. We got a def tank, fuel tank, 35 foot, two inch fill. Def tank's one inch fill, I believe. Or is it one and a half, I'm not sure. Either way, it's got a nice new motor on it. 900 plus gallon tank, I think it's 990. Ooh, brand new leak test on July 6th. These are actually made down near, um, I believe kind of down near, near Tumwa, Iowa, near Pella, Iowa. I think near Pella. Whew. And the coolest part, I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if I want it to work. Hydraulic jack. That's awesome. So this thing's gonna be sweet. Oh, this thing's gonna be really nice. So again, going from 100 gallon fuel tank capacity to 900 gallons, which will be really nice when we uh, don't have this thing for harvest and we might have something bigger and better. Guess your comments down below. And guys, real quick, if you guys have made it this far in the video, be sure to drop a like. It's the easiest way for you guys to support the channel and drop me a comment down below. Do you guys have any experiments with Thunder Creek fuel trailers? Obviously I know the, the some of the bigger guys like, you know, like Cola Corn Star or Millennial Farmer, they have one of these. What are the, some of the goods and the bads and the ugly? Let me know down below. This thing is going to be sweet. Walked by this thing, didn't even know it before. I'm excited. We also have two more things coming to the farm. I'm gonna leave that as is for right now, but 
that's gonna be really nice and very helpful for harvest. The other thing that we have to come to the farm, it's gonna be useful mainly around the shop. And the other thing, the last thing that's for sure that I know of is gonna directly impact me in the spring. I'll leave that as it is. But anyway, brand new thing on the farm. Let's go. You got some more pregnant cats, Curtis? Oh, God. <laughs> that one is. She's getting a belly on her. Have you seen how many cats? They're supposed to be a bolt there. You changing counter knives? What are you doing? Change that clay though. That's on that table over there. Look at it. You'll see how bad it is when I get it out. I see a big old bend right there, scuff mark. You see how all the oh. you see all the chunks missing? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. At least that's a, oh yeah, it's just a wear plate. That's not too bad at least. So Curtis is changing this plate out on the chopper. We got the right frame or the left hand frame broken. See right there, there's a crack. A crack up there. And there's a crack in the center. So we're gonna weld that up, get it all nice and patched up. And then there's also what I was just showing there, there's a, the pitman arm, the main drive to the shoe that gets the shaking motion, only had one bolt in it on one side. So instead of locking in, it was able to float a little. Seen this concrete in years. Wow. Took an entire semi load, they said, to clean all this junk out. This is pretty cool. Doing a lot of a uh, lot of good having Nathan and Curtis home getting stuff cleaned out. This farm's gonna be looking in tip top shape. Give us a couple years. The feed wagons back home from down south. That's pretty nice. And I bet my sprayer has good enough water in. Plenty of water. Yank this thing off. These guys are still doing work on the pit back there. I got wet. Not smart. Oh well. We got a lot of our silage chopped already. We got a lot of ear corn to do. We haven't done any of our ear corn. Silage, rough guesstimates on how much we chop. About 50 acres of silage and 150 acres of ear corn. The reason why we chop a lot less silage than ear corn is because silage you take the whole plant in. Ear corn you just take the uh, ear corn you just take the corn and the cobs. So it takes a lot more to fill up a chopper box. A lot many, a lot more acres to fill up a chopper box than when you're doing silage. All right, let's go ahead, pull this over, unfold it, and spray some water through. Sprayer is unfolded, pump's running, ladder is fixed. Card right here to when I uh, got this thing stuck and messed up the ladder. It wasn't good. So I am gonna go ahead. water empty out all the all the things let's go so here's the field that we chopped put all this stuff in the silage Ooh, they actually might be pouring cement today either that or they're moving rock laying rocks you can kind of see that boom is extended but they're still working on that pit done a lot of work to it so far that's for sure so I'm just gonna go ahead and spray all this stuff out make sure all the chemicals out of here I'm gonna put antifreeze through it just put about a hundred gallons in and sprayed it all out still got stuff in the fill tank coming in so that's interesting I thought that'd be done but I guess not up in the rinse tank I should say so like I said I'm just trying to drain all the water out of this as I can That way there's no water in here that left. That way I can put antifreeze through it and we'll be uh, good, won't freeze. Now I'll go ahead and fold up the boom, get the rest of this water out of here and go put antifreeze in. I must have had a full rinse tank. See, it's been dumping for a while and it's still got some left. Sheesh. So I'm gonna head down to Rhonda's place real quick, or Pat and Rhonda's place. Um, I'm gonna drop these two nice gallons of antifreeze off. I'm gonna use up two we had from last year. Those two, he needs two for his camper, he'll winterize. So I head down there and swap them out. So one thing we're doing this year, because we don't have as much cattle, just because corn prices are 
all-time high well not all-time but really high so when corner prices are high it makes it much more expensive to raise cattle and cattle prices are mediocre I'd say so it just made more sense not to get as much cattle this year so because of that this yard is empty so we have been putting our good hay in here so the hay, hay that's been baled good stuck it in here and that's gonna make some really nice hay barn cap shed cap we don't do as much shed capped hay as we should so start in the right direction I guess Got the goods, just thought there was two, but there's actually five. So we'll dump that in the sprayer and go rinse it out. And then that sprayer is ready to be antifreezed, winter, or is antifreezed, is winterized, and ready to sit in the shed all winter. And maybe head to the dealer. Who knows? Got the pink love juice. Just about done. That's what it does. Antifreeze is in. Those guys are working on the uh, combine. We're gonna grab a bite of tea here soon. That was a beautiful lunch. Roast beef, potatoes, carrots, oh, baked beans, and homemade fresh apple pie. Fantastic. So now I'm gonna go take the sprayer out, get it, get that interfeed flush through it, and head up to Bellevue probably. Let's go. So I got my got my boom spraying I'm waiting until I see antifreeze come out instead of water so we're spraying right now I don't see any antifreeze coming out yet it's basically gonna come out it's gonna work its way out because you got more piping to get all the way out to the end as opposed to in the back here just got done winterizing so all antifreeze is flushed through and oh, now the sprayer is ready for the winter ready for the winter and it's not gonna crack out any fittings hopefully hopefully it's a keyword no. I'm going to split the stamp into two guys, so I hope you guys did enjoy this video. As always, stay safe. I really do appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to, again, hit that like button, comment if you guys have any questions whatsoever, and subscribing means a lot to me, guys. Follow us on both of our social media channels at Facebook and Instagram. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now. We're back for a little while now.